It's your boy Mitchell here, and what a result, you know, gladly take a one nothing victory at home against Southampton. Um, in all honesty, I didn't watch the full game. I was at training this morning. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I'm an academy coach uh, for a club where I live. Um, so I missed the first half. So I missed the goal. Um, but when I came home, I tuned into the second half. And I'm just gonna give notes on what I what I thought about the second half. Uh, first thing, right into it is Vicente Guaida. Manos de Dios, Dios mío. Vicente Guaida is interesting. He's he's a very solid goalkeeper, and I'm very glad we have him. Um, on my on my ride home, I was listening to the game, uh, and I. I think there was three chances Shea Adams had to absolutely bury it, and Guaida saved every one of them. Um, you know, there was the moment that Ward Prowse put in the the free kick, and towards the end of the match, uh, Guaida came out and punched it away, making an amazing call there. Um, I I'm just very happy with our goalkeeper situation. I feel like that's an area for Palace where we are very comfortable. We have Guaida and uh, Sam Johnson, and even, you know, Jack Butlin. We've got three very solid goalkeeper choices, and I think we are, you know, in safe hands, pardon the pun. Um, second thing is, as soon as he comes off the bench, the albino Iniesta, Will Hughes, just... I, I, I love him as a holding midfielder. I'm very glad we were able to get him from Watford. Um, apparently this was his 100th Premier League appearance. Um, I think he's the type of player who should start matches. Um, I'd like to see him start a match, um, you know, maybe not against a, a, a top side, but against a side like Southampton, I feel like that's a game where he could start. Um, he's a very... He's a very collected player, a very calm player, um, which is very funny to see him do interviews um, for Palace TV because uh, he's just, you know, he, he loves to take the piss. He's just that kind of guy. But when he's playing, he's very serious, very composed. Um, and I, I felt that he had an amazing game. Uh, third, I want to talk about something that um, my friends were saying in our group chat. Uh, apparently the first half was pretty good. I mean, we opened up the scoring with a, a beautiful goal from Anson Edward, from Tyreek Mitchell. Uh, so I, I can't really speak too much on the first half, but they were saying the second half was a lot worse. And from what I saw, we should have had maybe, maybe three goals total. Um, there was the moment IU was coming down the wing it was him and Wilf and a defender, and on both parts, I think we could have done better. Ayu, maybe square the ball earlier to Wilf, but Wilf needs to get in a better position. He is right in the shadow of um, the Southampton defender there, and with with that kind of an angle, you have the defender here, Wilf here, Ayu here, and then the goalkeeper here. There's no way you can play that ball forward. The only option would be to play it back uh, like alongside, but Wilf was just still running. Um, so I think just more awareness on where, more awareness on where they should be in that situation would be my takeaway from that moment. Um, we just, we need to take our chances. You know, we're sitting at a minus four goal differential right now, which is very telling. It's very telling that we we aren't taking our chances. Um, you look at teams around us in the table, and a lot of them are sitting on like higher negative numbers, zero, even in the positive numbers, and it's 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 telling. It's very telling for the lack of teeth that we show. We're not showing our teeth. We're not we're not taking our chances. We're just kind of sitting back and and 
playing the ball around. Um, fourth, I want to talk about the fact that we are now, as of right now, in the top half. I don't know, for later in the day when this video goes up, we might drop down to 11th, 12th, 13th. As it sits right now, we are in 10th. So top half of the table, feels good. As I said on the Wolves video, winning ways, it, it, it just, it feels good to win. It always feels good to win. So, um, you know, it feels great to be in the top half. You look at the teams around us and, you know, I, I feel like a lot of these teams we can beat. I feel like we have a good chance to keep pushing. You know, I don't, I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, but I feel like we can have a top half finish. You know, and, and I feel like at the end of the season, people are going to clip this, come back and be like, oh, he, he said this, he said this. Um, but as of right now, the way we're playing, I feel like we could have a top half finish if we secure a uh, central midfielder, a ball playing midfielder, a box to box midfielder in January, then definitely I think we could have a top half finish, um, which would be massive because I think our, our highest finish is 11th or 10th um, in the Premier League. Uh, if you don't count back when it was the first division or whatever. Um, yeah. And finally, I want to talk about the atmosphere at Selhurst. Um, today, you know, obviously I'm here in Canada. I'm not there firsthand, but coming through the TV, I could, I could feel it. I could feel the atmosphere the whole time. And even my mom was watching the game with me and she was like, oh, they're playing at Selhurst, aren't they? And I was like, yeah, like, yeah, of course. She was like, oh, I can tell. It's like, you can, you know, she doesn't know the, the stadiums, but she could tell by the atmosphere where it was. And having been there in May for the first time, it's an amazing experience. And even for neutrals, I would say if you want to find a good atmosphere, a good experience for a football match, go to Selhurst. There is something about the HF. There's something about, you know, even the family and the Arthur Way. There's something about the fans at Selhurst that is different. And I'm absolutely biased here. I'm wearing my red and blue colored glasses, but it's an amazing experience. Um, and I just, I, I, I really felt that in today's match. Uh... So with that, that those are my five takeaways from Crystal Palace versus Southampton. Um, yeah, you know, not not too much to say. It was just a very nice one nothing win. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll see you guys next time. Come up, Palace. This is the North End.